Hey guys, uh, Motor Ready here. So I wanted to make a quick uh, video of the uh, Russell Lee Long scene that I have in my gold wing. I'll keep the video as short as possible. I'll break the video into three parts. I'll first cover the uh, stock seat a little bit. Talk a little bit about the issue with the stock seat. Then I'll cover a little bit about the Russell Day Long seat. You know, the different variants they have and you know what they're really all about. And then I'll talk a little bit about the one and that I've gotten for my gold wing here. So the stock seat is really bad. So in my humble opinion, everything about the bike from the factory is really built for long distance touring, but for the seat. So in my case, with the stock seat, I would be able to you know ride for an hour, an hour and a half max, and then my butt and my back would hurt so bad that I'd rush back home. And um, I did also try the Utopia backrest for the stock seat and it did help maybe extend my riding for another hour but uh, that's pretty much it so it was very obvious very early on that I needed to get a better seat and this sentiment of mine is uh, not just me I think it's shared with a vast majority of uh, other gold wing owners there are some exceptions though I know there is a guy in the forum that I'm part of that has about 80,000 miles in about two years with the stock seat without any backrest I mean he for sure is extraordinary but for the vast majority people really struggle with the stock seat so in my case I have experience with the Russell Leilong in my previous bike as well as with Corbin and Sargent and I found the Russell Leilong more superior when it comes to long distance riding comfort so when it comes to a seat for the gold wing it became very obvious it was a no-brainer for me at least that i had to get a russell day long and i didn't want any uh, i didn't want any suspense if you will right i wanted to be absolutely certain that the seat i get will work so russell day long was the obvious choice in my case given my prior experience now russell day long they're a custom seat corbin and sergeant and others are not so what I mean by custom seat is they're a company based in California so you'll have to actually send your seat pan to them which is a good bit of uh, shipping expense right it's about $150-$200 depending on which part of the country you are but then when you ship the seat pan you'll also need to provide a lot of other information like you know what is your height what is your uh, weight what is your waist measurement what is your inseam you'll also have to tell them details about um, you know what is the fabric or the material that you want the seat built with You'll want to tell them whether you want a backrest or not. You'll also have to send them pictures of you sitting on the bike. So that way they'll know, you know, how well is your reach to the ground and things of that nature. And based on all of their information, they'll actually build the seat, seat custom for you. And it'll take about two to three weeks for you to get the seat back. So if you don't have a spare seat, then there's just about two to three weeks of downtime. So it's a significant money investment as well as a significant time investment. I'll talk a little bit about the pricing towards the end. So they have two variants when it comes to the day long seat. So one they have a, a day long variant and then they have a sports variant. So I have the sports variant uh, in the gold ring here. The day long variant and the sports variant they look somewhat similar but the in the day long variant I think the wing here is a little more prominent and it increases the height of the seat by about an inch and a half. And the reason is because for the day long variant they have a more robust suspension system built into the seat so with more stronger springs and things of that nature. And so with the day long variant, since it raises the height by another inch and a half, you know, when it comes to coming to a stop, you kind of need to scoot forward a little bit for your legs to reach the ground. And then when you get going, you kind of scoot back. And that's something very common and uh, owners know about it and they get used to it. So in my previous bike, when I had the day long version, I used to do that and kind of become second nature. You now the sports variant, the one I have, does not raise the height of the seat. It remains the same as that of the stock and the wing here is not that prominent and the reason is because with the sports variant you do get some wiggle room if you will so you can slide left and right a little bit when it comes to those corner carvings but with the day long you know you are kind of really cupped into one position and it kind of evenly spreads the weight so that way you don't really have your butt hurting and things of that nature um, yeah from a pricing standpoint they are um, not cheap meaning it's a good bit of uh, investment it will clearly be over a thousand dollars so keep that point in mind because if you want backrest you'll have to pay more depending on the choice of the material you'll have to pay more and if you add the shipping and then the tax and everything it's it's clearly over a thousand dollars so something for you to keep in mind and uh, yeah in their website they have a lot of details about you know if you want the exact pricing breakdown for 
the various choices that you want to opt for you'll, you'll get a very clear picture of the exact money that you'll have to spend so that's one thing the one that i have gotten here is the sports variant as i've uh, mentioned already but uh, when it comes to the choice of material right you have you have leather you have you have vinyl and then you have the sun, sunbrella fabric so what i chose for is the sunbrella fabric at the top and then vinyl at the side and i chose a uh, a slate color which kind of matches the stock seat color a little bit and so that's the choice i went for and one of the reason i went for sunbrella is based on my research i found that um, sunbrella the fabric manages heat a little better than leather during really hot summer riding and given the part of texas i am in it gets brutally hot in summer and not riding on summer is not an option right so i thought <laughs> sunbrella would be a better option for me to choose and yeah i'm quite happy so i have this seat for about nine months now i've put uh, close to 16,000 miles on this seat and i find it extremely comfortable um, i've done a ironward a saddle sore 1000 with this uh, i've done a 900 day mile trip several 400 day 500 day 600 day mile trips on the seat with uh, with great comfort and when it comes to comfort right it's not just the seat it's not just the seat right it's the seat seat is an important part of it but it is also the backrest and it is also the highway pegs uh, i'll probably make a separate video of the highway footprints that i have here so it's really a combination of all of that it's also a combination of the windshield it's also a combination of the helmet that you have it also have it's a combination of the earbuds that you have and things of that nature so all of them work in tandem to kind of keep you comfortable for those long distance rides from an issue standpoint, uh, two issues to point out. The Russell Daylong guys do try to retain the factory heating. But the, when they do that, what I've noticed is the factory heating is not as hot as the stock seats. So on a cold day when you turn on the heated seats, you do feel some heat, but it is definitely not as hot as the stock seats. So something to keep in mind, it doesn't really bother me. And the other issue is that the backrest, when it comes to the play here, there is only a little bit of play and it's in the backward most setting. And the issue, I'm not able to push it any further, backward. And in my riding gear, I do have a back protector. And so I am really pinned to the backrest here while I ride and in normal position. I would have liked a little bit more play where I could push the backrest a little further backward. That's something I can try to do. You know, when you actually buy the Russell Day Long, you have an option to customize it, I think, once or twice. Or when I say customize it, modify it once or twice after you've gotten the seat. Because, you know, again, this is a custom seat, right? So the their goal is to keep you really comfortable. So if you want some adjustments done here and there, minor adjustments, then you can actually send the seat back to them and they'll actually make the changes for you and then send it, send it, to, send it to you back for free. But the price of you shipping it to them is something that you have to cover so and then of course there's this two or three week downtime and so on so yeah i'm kind of in the fence if i have to make that adjustment or just live with it i've kind of gotten used to it already you know i've, I've had multiple really long days with my riding jacket and the back protector and so on i've kind of gotten used to it so i'll probably let it go so those are the two things I noticed. Otherwise, the, the seat is really, really comfortable and uh, well worth the money spent, I think. It is not, it's not cheap, but it, these seats are built very well and they last for several years. So from that standpoint, I think you will get your money's worth. And my, my justification for getting an expensive seat like this was that, hey, you are spending so much on this bike, right? If you're not able to ride it, what's the point? So for me, the first major investment when it comes to aftermarket accessory for the bike was this day long seat so there you go if you guys have any questions um, you know if there's anything that i didn't cover that you'll want me to talk about do let me know in the comments thanks for watching